Hey there everyone, welcome to the One Brain Four Wheels channel. It's the Gear Bear here like always, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do something on a C5 Corvette because it's broken yet again. Specifically, it's an AC issue, and so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys all the steps necessary to remove and replace the left or driver's side HVAC vent actuator. Uh, pretty much, it's the little motor or actuator that opens or closes a door in the HVAC ventilation system to help direct airflow uh, through the ducting and whatnot. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of what my problem was and how I'm gonna go ahead and actually get in there and replace that and hopefully, at the end of this video, we're gonna be all good to go. Well, my problem started with a very general symptom that something had gone awry with the AC system. And that simply was, one day I had ice cold air and the next day I had nothing but hot air blowing. The fan was totally fine, but the AC was not engaging. So the first thing I realized was that the actual AC light on my climate control system, the little buttons down there, it wasn't illuminated anymore. And so I thought that's kind of odd. It usually is already on, but I'll go ahead and click the button. So I did that and I actually noticed then that the amber light that's on that button would just flash six times and then go off, signaling that the system knew there was an error with the AC system and it wouldn't let it engage. So the next thing I did was use our trusty friend Google and did a quick search. And pretty much the first suggestion from every result I got was to go ahead and run the onboard diagnostics using the drive information center you know the little display underneath your gauge cluster um, if you guys don't know how to do that I'll go ahead and put a link to a video up here you can use there's plenty of videos on YouTube or online that demonstrate how to do this uh, but that one's just a good one pick one in your favorite doesn't matter um, but it'll allow you to go ahead and access all the onboard diagnostic codes that the car will run for you and it can kind of help you pinpoint where you should start your search in your kind of AC actuator, whatever issue you might be having. Now, after running the diagnostics on my car, I got the error code B0363, and that one signals an open circuit for the actuator. And so I did a little searching, and it turns out that probably is due to the door on the actuator, or the door that the actuator operates, not fully closing or opening, and thus giving an improper signal to all the circuitry and whatever that's involved in operating the HVAC system thus giving it an error code and thus preventing the AC from functioning because it thinks that there's an error in the AC system and just shuts it down. Um, it turns out that my actuator still functions, I can still get it to direct the air properly, but because it's not giving the right signal, it's just kind of giving it a little bit of a hiccup to the system and it's causing a bigger problem than it should because like I said, it still functions. It's just, you know, a little error like that will shut down the whole system. That's kind of part of the issue with all these electronic gizmos and things on cars nowadays is they take something that would be a non-issue and make it an issue. Uh, but anyhow, because of that, uh, there's a couple options. What I'm going to do in this video is just replace the whole actuator, but you can also look online and some people will re-index the actuator. They'll go ahead and disassemble it essentially. So remove it from the car, disassemble it, and then kind of rotate the gears a little bit and reset them. So that way it's actually all aligned properly at the, the open and closed positions. Um, but I think, you know, after doing all this work, I'm just going to go ahead and replace the actuator so I can kind of hope that I don't have to deal with this again anytime soon. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in the car. I'll show you guys all the steps that lead up to what I'm gonna show you. And then I will hopefully at the end of this video show you guys that it resolved my issue and we're all good to go. All right, now before I get any farther in this video, I do feel obliged to tell you guys that this actuator replacement did not actually solve my AC problem in the end. Now, initially it did seem to work. The AC started running after I fixed everything and the code went away. And I did end up needing to replace the actuator anyways because it was going bad. So it would have kind of broken down the line. But actually what it ended up happening was a couple days later, the AC stopped working once again and the little light kept blinking. So I took it to the Chevrolet dealership and it turned out my AC compressor was just old and it was leaking out Freon. And so the intermittent problem was really just because sometimes it was able to build up just enough pressure to click on, sometimes it wasn't. But anyhow, I just want to let you guys know that this did not actually solve the AC issue from operating or not operating. But this video is still a good tutorial if you need to replace your actuator, but if you're having bigger AC problems, Sorry, this isn't gonna solve it. So before we get started with the steps that are gonna be encompassed in this video, I'm assuming that you guys have taken care of a few steps that can kind of be grouped into two major groups. Number one, I need you guys to have all the trim removed that goes around the center console, so pretty much the trim that goes around the radio, the HVAC controls, it kind of extends over to the ignition switch. I need that to be removed. 
Um, in addition, I need your little traction control switch area to be removed. Uh, the center console storage cubby also needs to come out. And if you have a convertible, you're gonna need to take off the plastic and the painted area that goes around that center support for your tonneau cover. Now, if you guys haven't done that yet, I'll go ahead and post a video right here, which will demonstrate how to go ahead and do that. The second thing you guys are gonna take care of is removing your speedometer or your uh, gauge cluster. And so if you guys don't know how to do that, I would also go ahead and put that here. And by doing those two steps, it's going to allow you to access that left-hand actuator without having to remove the entirety of your dash or having to crawl up under your driver footwell and kind of be a contortionist and try and get your hands up in there. Uh, I found that this is gonna be the easiest way to do it without having to take apart as many things because some people either do that contortionist thing where you can crawl under and uh, kind of remove some Bose equipment and kind of fish your way up there and access that actuator. Or some people go the other way and remove the whole dash and that's completely unnecessary unless you're also doing the passenger side actuator. So I think overall this is a pretty good way of doing it. Um, but yeah, I am assuming that you guys are taking care of those things. So if you haven't, go ahead and watch those videos and then kind of jump back to this one. All right, so just to quickly review what we're working with. So convertibles only, go ahead and remove your waterfall. Then I didn't actually remove the center console uh, storage cubby, but I did loosen it up and you can go ahead and move it back like this a little bit. Um, just kind of pull it back and it will then allow you to go ahead and remove the center stack plastic surround and this, the plastic, it's all together. It kind of goes around um, the shifter boot and all that stuff and it wraps around over to the ignition a switch over there. Go ahead and remove all that. Then I went ahead and removed this lower dash panel, you know, where your knees go, remove that. And then what I went ahead and did also was removed the A-pillar trim. Now what that does, it allows me to access a couple of the bolts that hold on this side of the dash on the driver's side. Now, like I said, you don't have to remove the dash, but allowing that to happen uh, kind of gives you a little bit of means of flexing the dash just enough to help you finally remove the speedo cluster. After all that's done, you guys are ready to begin this project, removing and replacing the actuator. All right, so now that we have all this stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the point of this video, which is accessing and replacing that HVAC actuator, which if I come around the steering wheel, you guys can see is right back here held in with a couple screws. However, before we do that, we need to remove one major thing, not that plug, um, it's actually this duct right here with um, a little bit of a muffler on it. And that is for the ambient air sensor for the inside of the cab of the vehicle, which kind of comes down here. And then you guys, you kind of remember when you removed that kick panel uh, below earlier, um, that had the sensor that kind of tells the HVAC system what the temperature on the inside of the car is and how to fluctuate your automatic climate control system. So to go ahead and remove that duct, it looks like it's just held in on this bracket right here by the ignition. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out on it. I think it's just clipped in a little bit. Let's see. How do I go about doing that? Let's, I can't access it from the back, but it looks like it's just one of those like push-in things. So I think if I just pull it really hard, it should kind of pop out. Actually, you know what? Screw that. I don't feel like breaking that. So instead, the main thing here is we need to go ahead and get that muffler out of there so I can actually pull this, uh, the actuator out. So instead of trying to break a clip back there, this duct is pretty flexible. I'm just going to pull out on it, kind of like bend all this stuff up, and I'm going to separate it from the muffler back here and just kind of bend that duct a little bit and boom, it popped out. Nice. Okay, cool. Pulled off the side. Now all that's there is the muffler and it's attached, I guess, to some other aspect of you know, that system for the ambient air temperature. But I'm just gonna go ahead and twist and pull it off based on what I found on the Corvette forum. And hopefully that will actually work. So, oh, it's sticky, that's not good. So twist and pull, twist and pull, twist and pull. Hey, it worked. That is disgustingly sticky. Why is that sticky? Oh my God. All right, so I'm not really sure why this is all sticky on the outside. It looks like it had some foam, probably if it kind of banged around in there, just so it wouldn't make a weird uh, like ticking noise or something annoying, you know, to kind of keep the, the noise inside the cabin down from squeaks and rattles. Um, and it seems like that's kind of worn away. So maybe it's just the adhesive is left on this at this point. But you guys can tell this is the muffler for that. Um, Cause I guess what it is is essentially it's either, I guess blowing or sucking air. I'm not really sure how that system works but there's air passing through this at some pressure 
And so I guess maybe to alleviate some of the noise from the fans or whatever for this system, it has a little muffler in here with some foam on the inside uh, to go ahead and kind of block some of that sound coming through that duct. And so I'm not gonna really touch it, but you guys can see, I guess you could service this or replace that. So when it's actually attached to the ducts, you know, it holds it closed together, but then when it's out, it just opens up. So just when you go ahead and install it, make sure it's closed like this and then put it in those respective places and it'll hold it back together. All right, so moving along to removing the actuator itself, it's pretty simple. It's held in with two 5.5 millimeter head screws. You can see the one right there. And then there's another one at the back, a little bit lower. Um, and it's not too hard to access, but it is a little bit, you know, trickier with your hands. Um, and either way, I went ahead and used this short little uh, socket wrench, and it actually fit in both locations pretty nicely. I did use my hand to kind of support it in the back, but it worked out well. Now moving that out of there, you guys can see at that point, kind of remove the screw like so. Just get the last bit with your hand, that way you don't drop it. And then you can actually lift this whole thing to the left of the car, kind of pull it just like so off the shaft. See that white part down there? That's actually the plastic collar that goes around the shaft that moves the door. Now, if you pull this straight off, the only thing that's connected is this wiring loom at the top, which when you bend it down like this, you can see it's held in with a clip. So just go ahead and depress the top of it while pulling straight up and it should pull out like so. Yes, it's held in with a little, you know, one of these guys where you press the tip of it and then it goes ahead and leverages kind of like a teeter-totter the other end. It pushes up and then you can pull it out. And just like that, we have removed our left-hand actuator. So with the actuator out of the car, it's a little bit easier to see kind of the location of all the things we just dealt with. This is about the angle or so that it's mounted in there. And you guys can see there's that back screw that was kind of hard to actually show you guys. And then the one up front, that's the one I demonstrated actually removing the screw. And then the top, there's the wiring connector. And then in the middle down here, right there, that's the shaft that actually goes on to uh, connect with the door, um, kind of operating the HVAC, the flow of air. And if we flip it around, you guys can see that that shaft actually has two flat edges and two round edges. So just make sure when you go ahead and install the new one that you have that lined up and then it should be able to slide right back onto that shaft and then we'll be good to go. You guys can see there's some part numbers. I guess this was the original uh, AC Delco part numbers, um, but I'll go ahead and show you guys the new one that I bought and uh, kind of what part numbers you might be able to use um, as a replacement or our equivalent to this. Okay, so it's later this evening. I finally got my new actuator in the mail. It's actually pretty good prime uh, one day shipping at Saturday and I ordered it late last night. So that was pretty impressive. But yeah, here's the new one. There's the old one. Right off the bat, you guys will notice that yeah, they are pretty much the same part. However, one thing that's worth noting is that you'll notice this one does not have any screws that allow you to take apart the actual assembly. Whereas this one has four little screws you could take off that cover and actually see the gears. So that that one you could actually re-index the gears and do that whole process if you wanted to try to repair it where this one pretty much if this one breaks you're just going to be replacing this unit no matter what and this is how some of the later c5 uh, years uh, came with ones that were more similar to this where they just weren't serviceable but anyhow um so yeah this is the new one let me put this one off to the side down there and real quick here is the doorman so it's a doorman um Part number 604106, air door actuator. And this is the same part for both the left and the right actuators for the HVAC in the C5 Corvettes. And this will work for all the years with the automatic AC system or the dual zone, the you know, where you could actually set a temperature versus having like old school dials or one zone. Um, so yeah, if you've got a system that has this type of um, controller on it, then this is the part number for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this now back in the cavern of death. It's all dark back there. Um, I'm gonna install it. Oh, one other thing too, is I did disconnect the battery. And the reason why I did that was because um, once you reinstall this and kind of put everything back together, you need to go ahead and let the AC system re um, kind of calibrate the, the doors and the position of everything. And so you could either pull a fuse, I think down underneath there for the HVAC system, or you can just go ahead and pull the battery or excuse me, disconnect the battery, hook all this stuff up. Then when you connect it, it'll go ahead and kind of you know reposition everything and get everything synced up. And we should have zero codes and it should hopefully fix our AC problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then come back and show you guys what happened. Alrighty, so as you guys can see, you know, our AC non-functional issue did get resolved simply by replacing 
that actuator. It took a little bit of work, but it wasn't too bad, and the cost of the part isn't that bad either. So overall, I'd say it's a moderate project, definitely something anyone, you know, at home could do. You don't need to take this into someone, a professional. Um, you know, you can save yourself some money as long as you want to give it a little bit of time. It's fine. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, I'm pretty stoked that this worked out and, you know, using the onboard diagnostics to go ahead and pull that code for the left actuator open circuit, uh, that was definitely helpful in steering me in the right direction. So hopefully, you know, if you guys are getting the same code or another code that's related to that left actuator, this video will help you out. And if this video is helpful for you guys, I would really appreciate it if you give the video a big thumbs up, help get it up in the search results and, you know, help other Corvette owners uh, part of the Corvette family, you know, go ahead and share the knowledge and help them uh, find this information a little bit easier. But if you guys want to see more videos of me doing more things with the C5 Corvette, my 2003 Suburban, the 97 or the 1977 Cadillac Eldorado, the 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee, or the 1988 Pontiac Fiero, I think that's all the cars, uh, then please subscribe to the channel One Brain Four Wheels. And until next time, guys, I'm going to be putting this car back together, but I'm sure something else will break soon, and then I'll have more content to make for you guys. But anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Like I said earlier, I hope this really helped you guys out. Um, definitely, you know, no one wants to be rolling around with a hot car. So AC is definitely a plus, and let's keep them running.